Today we will be talking about an interesting little vitamin called alpha tocopherol, otherwise known as vitamin E. So today's topic is going to be synthetic vitamin E versus natural vitamin E. What in the world is the difference and is there a difference? Well the answer is yeah there's a huge difference. There's a little difference that leads to a huge difference. So when it comes to synthetic vitamin E, we can make vitamin E in a laboratory pretty easily actually. It's a pretty simple acid catalyzed condensation reaction between TMHQ, my hand here will be TMHQ, trimethylhydroquinone, and this hand is going to be phytol or isophytol. It's kind of like the, the head of vitamin E and this is kind of like the tail of vitamin E. So when this reaction happens, um, the tail comes together with the TMHQ and these two functional groups latch onto each other. That's where the reaction takes place. Now here's, here's the difference. Due to the nature of this reaction, half of the reaction is going to happen in which the phytol tail attaches this way, and the other half, the, the phytol is going to attach in a kind of a tweaked orientation this way. This is what makes a huge difference, because we'll call this guy D-alpha tocopherol, and we're going to uh, call this guy L-alpha tocopherol. Now what happens is, where my thumbs are right there, where the, the, the magic takes place, right here, there's what's called a methyl group sticking out right there. Methyl group is CH3, it's a carbon with three hydrogens. Now the difference is the orientation in which that methyl group lies on, um, in reference to the vitamin E molecule. If it's pointing in one certain um, orientation, we're going to call that D alpha tocopherol, D uh, meaning dextrorotatory, or that methyl group can be facing another direction, and we'll call that L alpha tocopherol, L meaning levorotatory. So the, the big deal now is, okay, so there's a little tiny methyl group sticking out in one way. What's the difference? Our body's not going to know the difference. Our body does know the difference. And unfortunately what happens is when we take um, vitamin E orally, uh, the way that vitamin E is transported to different tissues is through a chaperone protein called tocopherol binding protein. Unfortunately, tocopherol binding protein is stereospecific for the D configuration of alpha tocopherol. So what happens with the L configuration? Not much because it can't bind to it. Uh, or very, very little of the L alpha tocopherol can bind to tocopherol binding protein. So it gets kind of left by the wayside. If you're taking um, L alpha tocopherol uh, as an oil or a cream, it's, it's fine, it works great. But if you take it orally, the L alpha tocopherol is not going to get to where it needs to go. So you walk into a vitamin store, you flip open over the label, and you look on the back of the label, it says DL alpha tocopherol. You know that was made synthetically in a laboratory because due to the nature of that reaction, 50% of that alpha tocopherol pro, uh, product will end up in the L configuration and the other half will end up in the D configuration. It's called a 50-50 racemic mixture or an equimolar race mate. So, difference, huge difference. You take vitamin E orally in a capsule, your body is going to reject half of it, so you're kind of wasting half your money. So you go to a vitamin store, make sure that you see, if you want natural vitamin E, make sure it says D-alpha tocopherol on the back of the label. Alright, so, hope you learned something about vitamin E. If you want more tips like these, come check us out at our websites.